what always impressed me was the calm. This is someone who walked into office faced with multiple crises. Each one of them could sink the country. But he was always calmer than the rest of us. From his first days in office, the difficult choices he made as president would not only shape the country's future, but reveal the character of the man. This is an economy right now that can't find the bottom of bad news. Dire predictions. A once in a century financial crisis. The six months surrounding January 2009 is the worst six months ever. Mr. President, millions of people are gonna lose their jobs. Financial system's locked up and it could collapse. Tonight, a top GM executive warned, without help, the company will default. There is no plan B. As I looked around the room, there were so many brilliant people, but at the end of the day, there was only one man in that room who had to make the decision, and all eyes were on him. Everybody, Democrats, Republicans, do not rescue the automobile industry. The questions that the president asked again and again and again had to do with how many jobs would be lost. Whenever folks were arguing about numbers and politics, he was always the one who brought it back to people. Every night, he's up until 2 o'clock in the morning with his big stack of briefing books. That's what he's doing after the girls go to bed. He does his homework, analyzing the issues, ensuring that he has prepared. He really didn't care about the politics. He weighed the politics like any politician would. But at the end of the day, he was always willing to lose in order to do the right thing. Always. A lot of people argued the politics were too costly. It'll be a cold day in hell before he socializes my country. Rahm Emanuel came to him and said, you're going to have to pull the bill, because if you push this legislation, you will lose in 2012. He knew there would be somewhere between 10 and 30 million people who would not get health insurance. Millions of people were being discriminated against by insurance companies. When you hear people more worried about the politics of it than what's right and what's wrong, I want you to think about the millions of people all across this country who are looking for some help. He's thinking to himself, if I decide not to push forward, what do I say to all those people who came up to me? with tears in their eyes telling me that they need this to save themselves. And if that means that I'm a one-term president, then I'm a one-term president. Nothing comes to the desk of the president of the United States unless it's almost impossible. And he has to figure it out. The most critical thing was, was he there? We never knew that for sure. The president turns to every principal in the room. What do you recommend I do? And they say, well, 49% chance he's there, 51. It's a close call, Mr. President. He said, all right, thank you. He said, I'll give you my decision in the morning. And dawn on me, he's all alone. This is his decision. If he was wrong, his presidency was done. Over. There were times when he could not find a way. At least 14 dead, 50 injured after a lone gunman opens fire in a theater There's been a shooting at a school in Newtown. This is the Sandy Hook Elementary School. There are reports of a shooting at a nightclub in Orlando. Where there are... I walk into the Oval. His head is down, and he hands me the speech, and he doesn't look up at me. He was too emotional. 
He wanted to ban assault weapons, he wanted to limit magazine sizes, and he wanted to impose a universal background check. Well, all three of those concepts are going to be on the floor of the United States Senate for a vote, and they're all going to lose. Congress literally does nothing? That's the closest I came to feeling disgusted. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. There's a part of him who thinks, I am in the most powerful office in the most powerful country on the planet, and I can't do anything to erase what just happened. We gather here in memory of 20 beautiful children and six remarkable adults. They were mothers and fathers. They were husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, friends. He thinks of it in terms of if we're his son, his daughter, his wife. He actually feels the pain. Amazing grace, the sound When we were lost, he asked us to believe. and try to see ourselves in one another. And through crisis and challenge, he kept fighting to move us forward. There's a temperament associated with being president that he uniquely has. Eyes always fixed on long-term successes. Americans don't have to worry about insurance companies discriminating against them if they have a pre-existing condition. Thanks to President Obama, General Motors is once again number one in sales worldwide. President Obama signed an executive order aimed at eliminating the pay gap between men and women in the federal government. America deserves equal pay for equal work. Judge Sotomayor, are you prepared to take the oath? I am. Please raise your right hand. We'll offer you the chance to come out of the shadows so that you can finally have the dignity of knowing you belong. Mr. Obama is the first sitting U.S. president to visit Cuba in nearly 90 years. Osama bin Laden has been brought to justice. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. He's ignited the most robust international agreement on climate change. The Paris Agreement represents the best chance to save the one planet that we've got. Obama announced a historic breakthrough with Iran today. A comprehensive, long-term deal that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. He has this deep conviction that at big moments when we need to, we can still come together as a country and that out of a long political darkness, a brighter day will come. From the Supreme Court, we have read from the bench, there is a right to marriage equality. I repeat, there is a right to marriage equality. Just Today, we can say that we've made our union a little more perfect. That love is love. The Dow closed today at 10,000 points higher. That's the longest stretch of private sector job growth in our history. The First Lady said it best. Being president has not changed who he is. It has revealed who he is. His core values, his principles, his temperament. I just stay at it. And I'm just going to keep on staying at it as long as I'm in this office. And America will succeed. I am absolutely confident about that. In moments of turmoil and doubt and crisis, when there are no good answers, when nothing is black and white and everything is gray, he is that calm presence, that poise and dignity and grace under pressure. That is who he is.